Tired of your weekly routine? Looking for something new? Come with us as we explore the University of Houston and Space City's endless possibilities. It doesn't matter if your passion is for the outdoors, for the arts, or even for the food. Houston has a little something for everyone. Let's explore it together. This is Video Workshop. Movies are um, a film script is in a constant stage of revision. Hello, I'm Dominique Soxa. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Andrea Gonzalez. Today, Josh Alden speaks with Barrio Dogs about the importance of spaying and neutering. Renia Grant sits down and has a chat with local experimental musician Kyle Vento. Later, Andrew Riggs investigates the relationship between bicyclists and pedestrians on the very busy U of H campus. Want to impress that special lady in your life? Chelsea Trahan will show us how to make our very own jewelry. We have an incredible program lined up for you today. Thank you for tuning in and hope you enjoy the show. But first, let's join Katie Richmond with her guest, former Fox and ABC News reporter Whitney Miller. Katie? Thank you for joining us today on Video Workshop. Don't forget to tune in next week where we will be exploring what makes Houston and the UH campus such an amazing place. I'm your host, Andrea Gonzalez. Next week, we'll show you what it's like to get foot loose with your fitness when we visit a Zumba class right here on the University of Houston campus. Also, if you ever get nervous walking to your car at night, UH campus police will show you how to protect yourself with some self-defense moves. Then we'll speak to fashion designer Ashton Miyako, who's making it easy for Houstonians to be both fashionable and frugal. Plus, we sit down with international abstract artist and local gallery owner Jumper Maybach. Houston's theater is remodeling from the ground up, but where will they perform this season? We'll show you where, and it's closer than you think. So join us next week right here on Video Workshop. But now, let's go with our Video Workshop crew to Katy, Texas, where they visited a unique Korean martial arts world tournament. Today's video workshop was directed by Sofia Cordero Guzman, produced by Emerald Owl. The news directors were Andrea Gonzalez and Clinton Lucas. This program is a laboratory production of the Jack J. Valenti School of Communication in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences at the University of Houston. All participants are under the faculty supervision of co-executive producers Craig Crow and Randy Polk. Views express a video workshop are not necessarily those of the sponsoring organizations, the University of Houston or KUHT. This is Flynn Haas speaking. Video workshop is recorded in the studios of KUHT Channel 8, Houston, Texas. Tired of your weekly routine? Looking for something new? Come with us as we explore the University of Houston and Space City's endless possibilities. It doesn't matter if your passion is for the outdoors, for the arts, or even for the food, Houston has a little something for everyone. Let's explore together. This is Video Workshop. Movies are um, a film script is in a constant stage of revision. Hello, I'm Dominique Soxa. Welcome, I'm your host Chelsea Trahan. Today, Fong Ha shows us how the art from the street is making its way into galleries. Learn how to impress your guests with fun and colorful party drinks. Josh Alden shows us how. Later we meet rising tennis stars with Elisa Cervantes at the Zena Garrison Tennis Academy. Aaron O'Keefe talks with artist Michael C. Rodriguez about his art and design. We have an incredible program lined up for you today. Thank you for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the show. 
But first, let's join Bertani Strambler with Sergio Beretta, co-founder and president of Adaptive Athletics, who promotes sports programs for students with disabilities. Bertani? Hello all, welcome to Video Workshop. Here with us today, we have Sergio Beretta, co-founder and president of Adaptive Athletics, an organization here at the University of Houston providing competitive sports for students with disabilities. Hi Sergio, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm great, we're glad to have you. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a little bit more about your um, organization and what made you come up with this creative idea? Yes, me and a couple of my friends got together back in fall 2011 uh, to provide uh, athletic opportunities for students with disabilities. Uh, we got together uh, and hoped to create the second uh, program for uh, adaptive athletics here in the state of Texas. And uh, we ran into some rough patches along the way. And a uh, year after that, we ran into a professor. He was a newbie professor in the health and human performance, uh, Dr. Cottingham. And uh, he became our advisor and took us in a road of uh, wheelchair rugby. Wheelchair rugby is our flagship sport uh, because it's less competitive in the collegiate realm, uh, meaning that we could easily create the program and hope to uh, start the collegiate uh, division of virtual rugby. Okay, that's a, you know, an awesome story. So can you tell us a little bit more about some important events that you know, your organization are you know, um, um, in? Well, this, uh, uh, in the fall we do a fundraising tournament where we get other student organizations and uh, organization around the Houston community to come and uh, they actually get to play virtual rugby and compete in a fun field uh, tournament. And uh, in the spring we offer a uh, an international uh, tournament where team from all over the nation and uh, all over the world come and they play World Rugby for a championship, or you could say. And then we host a summer camp for uh, people wanting to learn more about uh, World Rug Rugby or whatnot, so I think. Okay, and has this been like a rough path for you? I know like, you know, coming up with your own idea and organization, like how has the process been for you? Has it been like a rough, like, you know, uh, getting this started or how has the process been? At the beginning, it was rough because we, we were new and we had little guidance uh, to go upon and it's been really rough, but when we met uh, Dr. Michael Cottingham, we got to uh, change the directions or whatnot. So. And then you said Dr. Michael Cottingham. Okay, and who exactly is that? How did he? You know, how is he? Um, Michael, is? Dr. Michael Cottingham is. Uh, a nerdy professor at the Health and Human Performance. He teaches uh, sports admin courses. So, and he also had some little background on adaptive sports as well. So he uh, was a vital asset to our organization. Okay. And what made you decide when you were coming up with this idea, what made you come up with rugby? Like, why not any other sport? Okay. In the state of Texas, we have a, another 
school that has adaptive athletics, and they mainly focus on wheelchair rec on wheelchair basketball. And so, at first, our organization wanted to talk on wheelchair basketball. Okay. Well, thank you for coming out. That's all the time we have, folks, for Video Workshop. I'm Brittany Strambler. Houston-born tennis legend Zena Garrison is a name that won't be forgotten in the Bayou City. She's an Olympic gold medalist, three-time Grand Slam champion, and was number three in the world. But what's more impressive is the Zena Garrison Tennis Academy. They promote higher education in the classrooms as well as on the tennis courts. No matter their skill level, the Zena Garrison programs work with its students to get the best tennis experience. The man that introduced Zena to tennis at the McGregor Tennis Courts, John Wilkerson, is the senior director of tennis. He did learn tennis until high school and quickly won district and state titles. He then went professional. He continues to instruct children on the courts. Can you give me an explanation about the diff different tennis programs that you have going on? Well, we try to have as many different programs as needed. Whatever kids need, we try to attend to that need. If they need education, we do tutoring. If they need to learn about nutrition, we teach them how to eat. If they have problem with families. We teach them how to handle those problems. Whatever it is, we deal with it. If they're being bullied, whatever, we deal with it. We, we tend to their needs. They let us know what they need and we are given what they need. During summer programs, children ages 3 to 12 and teenagers can get out of the house, catch a tan, and get A1 instructions on the court. The best part is the summer programs are free and conveniently at Memorial Park, where the whole family can come out and have fun. During summer, they only have one rule, that you bring a hat and a bottle of water. Throughout the school year, the Zena Garrison Academy has programs that allow kids to play during the week, whether for fun or competitively. Their ages range from 4 to 18 years old. I understand you have children here. How do you feel about them attending the academy? I feel like they're in really good hands. I trust John. He's a great teacher. Uh, he's a great mentor. And um, he really teaches the kids about life more than tennis. So tennis is important. It becomes a vehicle and um, he's really teaching life skills. It's just how I teach tennis, so I think it's great. I love that my kids are out here and we've come full circle with the program, so I'm excited to be out here and just volunteering my time on the days that I can to be able to help them out, because I really do believe in the program. How often do you volunteer and what do you do? Uh, right now it's just once a week, because that's the only day I'm available is today. Um, and basically I come out and just offer my services as a future, uh, well, as a prior, uh, student of the academy and then um, you know wherever they need me so I could be working with any of the different levels that they have here in their three. Zena loves not only the kids but the collegiate players as well. She has an initiative with the University of Houston that will provide the campus with a multi-million dollar tennis facility including indoor courts, tutoring and much more. I have a little bit of insight about the new tennis facility that y'all are helping with at the University of Houston. Can you give me a little more insight? Absolutely. We are so excited to be partnering with the University of Houston. We are going, the Zena Garrison Academy is going to have its facility, it's going to have its programming, it's going to have all of its, everything that it is, and its headquarters at the University of Houston in the new tennis facility. So all of the kids in the Zena program will come on a college campus, come to U of H, use the tennis courts there, do their fitness training, be tutored, uh, have all kinds of access to the University of Houston as well as be in our standard program right at U of H and it's a program called Advantage Houston. The Academy isn't only about tennis. Other programs include boys and girls leadership programs, academic support, and community support programs. Zena Garrison has touched every part of the city of Houston and left her Hello and welcome. I'm Claudia Miranda and I'll be your host. Hungry for something new? Andrea Gonzalez will be dishing about a food truck with a Venezuelan twist. Houston is famous for many things, but one thing that characterizes the city is its diversity. The Venezuelan community has been slowly migrating to Houston and they're bringing with them their language, their culture, and their food. The situation in their country has brought many Venezuelans to Houston to start a new life, and many even start new businesses. One of them is a popular food truck parked on a very busy West Houston intersection. I tracked down Jose Muñoz, owner of El Sabor Venezolano, to tell us more about his business. 
We're here with Jose Muñoz, owner of the food truck El Sabor Venezolano. Thanks for having us. Thanks for the interview. So tell us, what was your motivation for doing this? Why a food truck? I opened it 12 years ago. I felt the need since I was unemployed, and I've always loved cooking. So I decided to come up with something for the people and be recognized for it. It has been very successful so far. We were the first Venezuelans in Houston to do this, and we get a lot of people from different cultures. In 2002, around 100 of Venezuelans were located in the Houston area, and it was difficult for them to establish in a foreign city. Due to the oil strike in Venezuela two years later, there were around 10,000 Venezuelans living in Houston. Today, the amount has almost doubled. It was very difficult since we were so few. I think there were no more than 100 Venezuelans. But we also have Mexican food, and we have received support from Mexicans, Colombians, and from Central Americans. We had a lot of support, thank God. I understand you opened a restaurant in Katy with the same name. Why in Katy? Because the Venezuelan community is big in Katy, they've supported us a lot. So I felt like I had to give back to them and be closer to them. It has been very successful being there. How do you see the Venezuelan community in Houston? How have you seen it evolve? And why do you think they come to Houston? I think many people have moved here because of the job opportunities and because living here is less expensive than other places, like for example, New York, Chicago, and Miami. Thanks to them, many Venezuelan businesses have grown. Like me, for example, I'm planning to come up with a third business. In Venezuela, people normally go out at night and afterwards they eat at many food trucks they have. I'm assuming you wanted to do something similar? Yes, I try to do the same thing. We do that in Venezuela and people call it the hungry street because there are so many food trucks in one street. Here we have just one, but we are open until 5 in the morning every weekend for people who want to come eat arepas after they go out and party. You mentioned before how you loved cooking. Do you think it would have been harder to come up with a business like this in Venezuela or is it more difficult here? Well, here we have different cultures. The language, like English, is not very good. But when you want to do something, God puts obstacles in your way and you overcome them. Now it's my turn to try some Venezuelan food. For a video workshop, I'm Andrea Gonzalez.